in 2009, a commercial jet aircraft taking off in New York hit a flock of Canada geese, which disabled both engines and forced the pilot to successfully land in the Hudson River. That incident is now famously referred to as the miracle on the Hudson. Now, I'm sure many people, when they saw that news story, were wondering, is there more information out there about when birds hit aircraft, and can I learn more about that type of incident? Well, fortunately, that data is out there. It's available for you to download for free. And in this video, we will show you where to get that information, how to then model that information using Microsoft Power Pivot for Excel 2010, and then we will migrate that data to an Excel dashboard where you can engage in business intelligence, slice and dice analysis in order to learn more about that information. Now I'm sure that if you bring up the topic about aircraft hitting wildlife in polite conversation, many people will probably tell you that that's something they expect to happen when pigs fly. Well, that data is out there, and for those of us who like to make data-driven decisions, uh, it's something which we can download and work with. And at the end of this video, I'll show that we can uh, answer basically their challenge, both literally and figuratively. So let's go to the link here for raw data. And here at data.gov, there are many different types of data sets made available by the U.S. government from different agencies, which you can download and work with in order to learn more about the information within those databases. So we'll do a quick query for wildlife. And you'll see at the top comes up aircraft wildlife strike data. And if we go to the information uh, at that link, you can see that... Uh, there's a data dictionary which you can link to. There's a link to actually download the data up here in the right hand corner. And when you download it, it will be in the format of a couple of Excel worksheets along with a Microsoft Access database. Now the Access database is functionally the fact table. And if you go to our blog at blog.genetgroup.com, there is a series of articles which actually walk you through the process of where to get this data, how to model it, and then effectively how to migrate it to a dashboard uh, so you can make your own reports and learn more about this information. So once we have this information downloaded, we can then pull it into Power Pivot where we actually model it. So here we're looking at the actual model and the fact strike report, which you see in the middle. That is the Microsoft Access database information, and it's then connected to the different dimension tables uh, in a traditional star schema type business intelligence uh, database reporting model. You can see here in the date dimension that we've also added a hierarchy so that uh, within the model it's defined that a year breaks down into months and breaks down into individual days. You'll also see that the custom calculations which were built into the model are here on the fact table. Uh, within the blog article uh, on this topic at GNET Group, you'll actually see that we do have available the actual DAX code, which you can paste into Power Pivot in order to build those calculations. So everything you need is at the blog and available for you to, uh, to be able to replicate these reports on your own. Once we're here in Power Pivot, let's move over to the data view. And you can see that right now we're looking at the fact table. For example, here's the date table. And on the fact table, you'll see that uh, you can also create custom columns. So we've created a custom column here for airport runway because within the data source you could get the airport ID and you could get the runway number, but sometimes there was the same runway number for different airports. So the runway numbers weren't necessarily truly unique. So you can see in the bar here at the top, we did a DAX calculation to concatenate airport ID with runway in order to come up with a value that is going to give you a, new, a unique runway ID. So in this column, you'll see for JFK Airport, there is a runway uh, either now or historically that was called 4R. Now down at the bottom, we have the calculation bar, and that's where all of these custom DAX equations, which were provided within the data model, are pasted in. So you can see, for example, damage count is uh, using a little bit of DAX code. You're doing a count on rows where there was damage, 
and uh, and it's basically doing a count of uh, how many times there was actual damage due to the wildlife aircraft strike. Once we've done all of this work and built out this data model, honestly, if you read the blog posts, it won't take you more than a few minutes if you're an experienced power pivot professional uh, to maybe a couple of hours if you're new to the subject uh, to get that done and to get it ready in order to, uh, to pull in for reporting. So once that's done up at the top, you can go ahead and migrate the data model to Excel. And you'll see that we've built out a few different dashboards here where different uh, graphs and different charts have been made in order to uh, basically build dashboards using that information. So let's go ahead and take a look at uh, when aircraft were destroyed. So you can see that uh, white-tailed deer were the cul culprit 18 times when aircraft were completely destroyed. And you can see then that uh, unknown birds of medium size often called, caused issues. And uh, there's those Canada geese that we talked about from the uh, Miracle on the Hudson five times in the last 20 some years. They have uh, caused catastrophic destruction to an aircraft. So let's go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and filter by state. So if we look at just the state of New York and then we go to 2009 and there we have our incident for the uh, Miracle on the Hudson. So you see that data is included within that set. I'm assuming, of course, that uh, in New York in 2009, there was only one aircraft destroyed by Canada geese, and this is the one that it was. But uh, um, I think that's a pretty good assumption to be able to make. Now let's go ahead and take a look at my hometown airport here in Minnesota, which is the Minneapolis-St. Paul International Airport. And you'll see that uh, unknown birds of medium size are usually the culprit. And one thing I noticed in the data, if you look at the graph down on the bottom, there's a spike here in August, and the spike is for barn swallows. Well, let's take a look at the state as a whole. And the state as a whole still has that spike for barn swallows. And let's even look at our neighbor to the west, North Dakota. And in North Dakota, you'll see that there's also a spike for barn swallows in the, uh, in the month of August. Now, I wonder, is, is that just uh, something that's an anomaly in the data, or is there really something going on there? And if you read the series of blog articles, uh, you'll see that there is some information out there indicating that barn swallows in late summer will go higher in the air to chase the bugs. So that may, in fact, be a real trend, which we are able to then visualize and uncover uh, using Power Pivot within Microsoft Excel 2010. Moving on to another dashboard, here you can see that we've used the data model to create a report where we have the height at which incidents occurred, whether or not there were fatalities, the type of engine for which the incident occurred, whether there were fatalities, then also the type of species that caused the fatalities, and then off to the right we also have the type of species that caused different injuries. Then off to the left, you'll see in the slicers, we've actually added some different engine manufacturers along with uh, the year of the event, and the engine manufacturers can then drill down to the engine model. So if we were to, say, filter for General Electric, you'll see that there have been no fatalities uh, reported uh, since 1991 for General Electric engines on aircraft, and that uh, when it has happened, it's uh, usually been small birds that are unknown, and there's been a few injuries, but, uh, but no fatalities reported for that particular manufacturer. You can also filter by year. So if we look at just the year 2010, you'll see that there was one fatality, and that fatality was for aircraft between uh, 5,700 and 27,000 uh, kilograms. I think earlier I mentioned that it was um, a measure of altitude on rows on the top chart, and it's actually a measure of aircraft size. So. Um, you'll see that that one fatality happened on a, on a rather large aircraft, and it was one that hit a white-tailed deer. Uh, my guess would be is that when you're taking off on a runway, you probably don't want to hit a deer. That, that's, uh, that's a large object that's probably going to cause significant damage. Uh, as far as injuries go, over on the right, you can see that uh, gulls cause some injuries. Red-tailed hawk, which is a big bird, and if it, uh, if it hit the aircraft, it would probably do a great deal of damage. Let's move to a third dashboard that we've built, and this one is actually looking at that concatenated airport runway uh, column that we built in the data model, 
and let's go ahead and filter for Minnesota and you'll see that over on the right FAA region defaulted to show that Minnesota only exists within AGL so even though we're selecting Minnesota you'll see that the other filters will also kind of give you an indication of where that particular attribute exists uh, elsewhere within the data and then we'll go ahead and filter for Minneapolis St. Paul once again and you'll see that at MSP there are several runways where incidents have occurred uh, looking down the list you'll see that the uh, most incidents have been on runway 30 L and uh, the average cost of repairs is over a quarter million dollars so that's uh, that's a fairly significant amount of damage that's uh, occasionally happening on that runway then over on the right you can see that uh, sky conditions and precipitation um, basically are also included in the data model and can be viewed now the first column is where unfortunately the uh, sky conditions of precipitation were not reported uh, however we can see that uh, with no clouds there were quite a few incidents uh, some clouds and also overcast uh, so perhaps this isn't playing a factor for the attributes which you've selected for this particular report uh, additionally you can see incidents and the, how often damage actually occurred so it looks like the highest uh, the time where the highest incidents of damage actually occurred was incidents at dawn however since there were not very many incidents at dawn um, that could just be something which is a normal fluctuation in the data but, uh, but this is the type of information that can be used in order to determine uh, which airports and which, which runways are potentially seeing the most damage done to aircraft uh, by these wildlife strikes now to conclude this video we'll go ahead and build a custom report so if we open up a new tab down here at the bottom let's just go ahead and name it uh, wildlife strike new report we can go to our power pivot plugin up here on the information ribbon and we can go ahead and add a pivot table we'll just do a simple pivot table to keep this video short and uh, get to the point and let's go ahead and add a KPI. Now there aren't any KPIs right now in the Power Pivot data model, so we're going to have to go back and build one. So back here in Power Pivot, let's go over to the column for height. So if we want to create a KPI on height average, uh, we're going to need a benchmark in order to compare it against. So you can see that uh, we can go one cell below down here in the calculation bar and let's create a new calculated DAX measure for height average all and for this particular calculation let's use the DAX function for calculate and we want to calculate the average height And for this report, let's do it for species. So select the fact table, which is where that attribute is. And there we have it, our benchmark for the KPI that we'll be creating. And we'll go ahead and display that as a decimal number. Now, why height average for all species? Well, if we do the calculation in this manner, what we'll be able to do is see the average height at which all incidents happened versus the average height where uh, these filter selections for species happened. So what that translates into is that if we're looking at Minneapolis St. Paul height average all will be the value at which the average incidents hap happened for all species and height average will be the average value for individual species so we have a benchmark for each individual species so let's uh, let's make that a little bit more clear let's create our KPI and for the target value we'll select that height average all and just for fun let's uh, let's use these uh, these KPIs down here which are the escalating uh, signal strengths and let's set the thresholds at 150 
120, 80, and 50. So what we'll be able to see here is that in order to get four bars of um, strength, uh, basically the average height of a strike for a species will be at 50% above the target value, which is the average for all. For three bars, it's 20% above the target, and for two bars, it's uh, at 20% below the target, and one bar is 50% below the target, and below 50%, it'll be no bars. So now we have our KPI. We can then move back to that report that we're building, update the data, and once the update completes, we can open that fact table, and you'll see we now have a KPI, which we can pull onto that new report that we're building. And so you can see that the average height for all incidents is 816. I'm assuming that's feet. And the average height status is uh, basically comparing to itself, so it's going to be two bars. Now, what we can do is to start building out a report Let's pull species in on the rows. Let's order those. And before we do that, let's go ahead and pull in the actual number of incidents. So instead of ordering them by height, let's actually order them by uh, which species are causing the most issues. So now we have incidents on the report. Now let's go ahead and sort those species by incidents in descending order. And you'll see once again, unknown bird of medium size is the highest number of incidents. And interestingly, uh, across the entire data reporting set, they are actually happening at a height that's uh, way above um, the average. And that might be why they're unknown. It's happening so high up that they don't know exactly what type of bird hit the engine and uh, they don't find the carcass. Let's also go ahead and pull in the values from one of our dimensions. So we'll look at the damage dimension, damage description. And we'll go ahead and pull that in on the horizontal slicer. And now we can filter by the type of damage. So for example, if we want to only see incidents where the aircraft was destroyed, we can see that white-tailed deer is the primary culprit with 18 incidents uh, and um, an average height of 0.69, which I'm assuming is feet, so the plane might have been just starting to take off. Uh, for substantial damage, um, unknown birds, white-tailed deer, 307 white-tailed deer incidents. Many of these may be small aircrafts in rural airports. Uh, and I doubt there's too many deer uh, running around in some of the big city airports. Then if we want to pull in the date dimension over on another slicer, we can do that too. We can pull in that hierarchy that we built. And then we can also filter by year. So if we only want to look at information that we have so far for the year 2012, you'll see those incidents. And then let's say we wanted to cut down on the length of this report, so then we could maybe do a top 10 or maybe make it a top 20 list for top 20 incidents. So now you'll only see the top 20 species for which incidents were happening. And you can see that uh, in 2012, for the month of January, uh, unknown birds and mourning doves were the primary culprits. So now that we've built this report, let's go ahead and swing back to something that we talked about earlier in this presentation. I mentioned earlier that if you bring up this topic to many people, they might tell you that it's something that they'd worry about when pigs fly. Well, we've given you information that if effectively shows you ways to dig into that data, learn more about it, and to uh, basically know when, where, and how these type of incidents happen. Um, but let's go ahead and uh, directly address that particular statement. So if we were to, on rows, select the species of 
swine. You'll see that uh, over the last 20 plus years, there actually were two incidents where aircraft hit pigs. They were in 1999 and in 2012. So this is something which is still ongoing and still happens. Unfortunately, if you look at either incident individually, you'll see that the average height uh, was zero. So if you're an aspiring cryptozoologist, unfortunately, uh, although there are incidents of planes hitting swine, none of them give proof that the swine were actually flying at the time of the incident. It appears to have happened at a height of zero, which means that uh, they were on the runway. However, there is hope because perhaps they were on the runway uh, attempting to go airborne, and perhaps with more data, there eventually uh, might be an incident where they're airborne. I'm not going to keep my hopes up, but uh, but it is something which is fun to dig into and take a look at. So. Once again, the series of articles which are the basis for this video can be found at blog.genetgroup.com. Hopefully it can walk you through the process of pulling this information in and creating your own reports to learn more about it and uh, then maybe translate into uh, other opportunities to pull in data and to build your own slice and dice BI reports uh, using Microsoft Power Pivot within Excel 2010. For more information, please go to blog.genetgroup.com.